Corbin Burns, AJ Minter, Emmanuel Classe, all examples of really good cutters across the league. But there's a lot of variety in what these cutter shapes look like. Some of them succeed really well at 87 miles per hour, or some of them struggle at 93 plus. We're gonna take a deeper dive into those cutter profiles in today's video. What's up guys? My name is Chris Slangen and I'm a pitching coordinator here at Driveline Baseball. In today's video, we're gonna talk about cutters and their different movement variations we see across the league. If you haven't yet, we have a few other videos that will be helpful in your pursuit of learning more about cutters. Those being the introduction to spin and movement and our previous series on other breaking balls such as the slider and curveball just to maximize context for what those profiles look like. If you've seen our video on sliders and curveballs, you'll know that there's a ton of movement variety across the league. This persists with the cutter, though the fluctuation is a bit less relative to the slider. The cutter movement profiles we've noted for this video are the following. Our sliders, those being the gyro slider and the standard slider, the slutter, the gyro cutter, the standard cutter, the sweeping cutter, and finally, the backspinner. The need for this was discussed during our introductory video on movement and spin. We're liberally classifying the pitch types just by cutter, slider, and curveball just wasn't enough, as we just again saw too much fluctuation in how those pitch profiles looked across the league. For example, take a look at these classified cutters by Kenley Jansen, Blake Trinan, and Charlie Morton. In this series, we classify Jansen's cutter as a sweeping cutter, Trinan's as a gyro cutter, and Charlie Morton's as a slutter. For the cutter, we will actually reverse course a bit relative to our other breaking ball profiles. We're gonna start from the bottom of the movement chart, meaning something closer to a slider, and work our way up to more of our backspinning cutters. Since 2020, about 10% of classified cutters had movement characteristics that actually resembled that of a traditional slider, with about half of them being gyro sliders and the other half being standard sliders. The average gyro and standard slider league-wide is about 85 miles per hour, but when they were classified as cutters, they were thrown on average about 86 and a half miles per hour. They aren't entirely common and usually find themselves in arsenals that have bigger breaking balls in them, whether that be an efficient curveball or a sweeper. Some pitchers may simply utilize the pitch as a tighter breaking ball for behind or neutral count contexts. You Darvish, Aaron Loop, and Aaron Bummer are examples of pitchers who see their classified cutters really play like true sliders based upon their average pitch metric characteristics. Next up, we've got the return of our fan favorite from our slider variants video, the slutter. This breaking ball is the second most common among all of our slider or cutter classifications when you tie in both classified cutters and classified sliders, making it one of the most popular breaking ball profiles in the entire game. On average, this pitch was thrown right in between slider and cutter velocity at about 87 and a half miles per hour. The slutter also had the second highest stuff plus score amongst cutter profiles. Pitchers will often use this as essentially a slider to pair off their fastball, which is likely the case with AJ Minter. Alternatively, it can be used as a pitch to pair with a bigger slurve or sweeper, which is the case with Charlie Morton and Marcus Stroman. The gyro cutter is the first pitch that plays more like a traditional cutter given the vertical break on the offering. 13% of classified cutters saw their movement profile look like this over the past two seasons. The pitch is thrown nearly 89 miles per hour, with relatively low spin and almost no horizontal movement. One thing to note here is that pitchers with more depth or less vertical carry will see an uptick in their stuff's plus scores, assuming velocity stays constant. This pitch commonly has a very specific role in the arsenal and can play above its raw stuff characteristics due to that role. For instance, despite it grading out lower than both his slider and his sinker, Blake Trinan's cutter had the second lowest run value per 100 pitches this season behind just Corbin Burns. Like most traditional cutters, the pitch's vertical shape makes it a solid offering against opposite-handed hitters. Like the standard slider and the standard curveball, the standard cutter will have the highest usage across this profile in the game, making up just over 25% of usage over the last two seasons. This pitch, along with the other cutter profiles we've discussed previously, are common options for pitchers who struggle to pronate their fastball. For starters that don't have a changeup, they'll often be nudged to add some form of a cutter to attack opposite-handed hitters. This pitch differentiates from the gyro cutter due to the amount of sweep present on the pitch. It can also be used as a primary heater or as a pitch to utilize off of the heater. If you look at the examples above with Corbin Burns and Emmanuel Classe, those are examples of pitchers who utilize the cutter as a primary heater. At release, relative to a slider, the pitcher will be more behind the ball which gives him or her the ability to impart more velocity to the baseball at the trade-off of increasing backspin and or lift on the pitch. Generally the most sought after true cutter profile, the sweeping cutter makes up about 10% of all cutter profiles. The obvious difference between this pitch and our previous standard cutter is the addition of slider-esque sweep. These pitchers typically have well above average spin and well above average seam shifted wake to induce this type of glove side action while maintaining velocity well above the average slider. 
This pitch has the highest stuff plus score across all cutter pitch types. At release, the pitcher is behind the ball and on the side of it evenly. That being said, many pitchers will actually impart only a small portion of side spin with non-magnus movement aiding in the pitch generating glove side action after release. Finally, we've got the backspinner, which is a profile that actually mimics a lot of relative cut type fastballs you'll see across the league. Nearly 15% of classified cutters have ended up here over the past two years. The backspinner has far and away the lowest stuff plus of any breaking ball variant we've looked at in this entire series. The lack of glove side movement plus relatively high vertical carry make it an option that really struggles to miss bats. That being said, the pitch can be effective when thrown exceptionally hard or if used properly in the arsenal. Nathan Eovaldi, Marco Gonzalez, and Deception King, Yusmero Petit are hurlers who utilize this pitch in the arsenal. At release, pitchers allot well over 60% of their spin rate towards backspinning the baseball. Often, glove side break isn't present on the pitch, with many of these cutter variants actually backing up to the arm side. Cutter shapes league-wide are a bit less volatile than the slider, but this visual still showcases that a hitter is going to want more information than simply how the pitcher classifies the pitch given the variety of these cutter shapes. The cutter really requires context for how it projects to play in the arsenal. If you're looking to maximize the stuff plus on the pitch, most pitchers are actually going to be better off killing depth, making it more like a slider. If you already have a slider in the arsenal, there certainly isn't much purpose in doing such a thing. Understanding how it should play in the arsenal is vital prior to developing it and adjusting the shape. One of the tools we utilize here at Driveline Baseball to project pitch quality is the blob. The blob allows us to plug in pitch metrics, mainly velocity, horizontal, and vertical break, and summarize the quality of the pitch based just on its ball flight characteristics. This gives our athletes and coaches live feedback to know how they should adjust their cues and which pitch profile to lean into. Additionally, it ensures all parties are held accountable in the development process. This Stuff Plus model was developed by Driveline's chief research officer, Dan O'Coin. Appreciate everyone for following along today. We'll have a video showcasing how to throw a cutter coming out very soon. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like button and remember to subscribe. Any questions you have, please leave in the comments below and we'll be happy to get into more detail on answering those. Thanks for watching.